Millions of people walk right past palm trees every single day, but what you might not know is that an entire microbiome of hundreds of different kinds of animals live inside the crevices on the bark of these palm trees. Today, I am joined by Spencer from the channel My Wild Backyard in search for some of the strange animals, especially weird spiders, that could be found in these unusual areas. Now, one of the most common spiders out here are these little guys, beautiful little crescent-eyed spiders, and they're actually a lot harder to see than you'd think because that patterning gives them perfect camouflage on the bark of these trees or even on these little uh, pieces of the palm trees that are sticking out. And the reason they call them crescent-eyed spiders is that little crescent of eyes right in the front. But another nickname for them is the flatty. And uh, you can see why. Look how flatty is on my hand. And it's perfect, that flat body plan is perfect for fitting in nice little crevices inside these trees, heck, even inside tables and fences. You'll find them a lot, a lot of times closer to home, inside like picnic tables or like wooden fences where they'll tuck into little corners and wait for nightfall to hunt all kinds of cool insects in that wooden environment. These guys are ambush hunters, and right now he's, he's chilling. He's very, very still, but if he wants to, in a flash of motion, these guys can be lightning quick. So I gotta keep an eye on him at all times. Uh, I've had some of these today run up my sleeves, in my shirt, and uh, it's always annoying to try and get them out of your shirt. So watching him, he looks pretty chill though, but absolutely beautiful little spider out here in this habitat. That Solenops was amazing, but after some more walking and searching, we ended up finding something that, while it isn't a spider, is still an extremely significant find. All right, children, I know we're out here looking for spiders, but I had a feeling that there'd be something really nice in the crevices of this palm tree right here. And actually, there is a species of lizard that I've been looking for for years, the Indo-Pacific house gecko. And there is just one sitting right in there, so I'm gonna try and catch it and bring it closer for you guys to see. Got it. All right, children, this right here that I have is my lifer Indo-Pacific house gecko. Now this is unfortunately not a native species to South Florida, but it is not a very commonly seen species here in South Florida. They are very, very, very outnumbered by the much more common tropical house gecko, which itself is also not native. Now this species can be differentiated from the tropical house gecko by the patterning on it. Now on the top of its body, you can see there's a ton of those little tiny white speckles those little white polka dots sticking out against that kind of darker grayish brown base color. Now, if you look at the bottom, his belly is more of a yellowish color, and the bottom of its tail is like a bright reddish orange, and there's these long, kind of ventral scale looking scales running underneath that are pretty thin, they're pretty narrow and long, and they run all the way down the tail. So this is quite a distinctive house gecko species. House geckos are mostly nocturnal, and during the nighttime they will actually change their coloration to be more of a pale pinkish color. Now, that means that these little white spots normally go away, and on other species of gecko, their distinctive patternings that they have during the daytime also go away. So identifying house geckos at nighttime is a little tougher. But these Indo-Pacific house geckos should still have the yellowish underside. Some individuals might show a little bit of that speckling still, so it should still be pretty easy to point out an Indo-Pacific house gecko at nighttime at your light compared to the much more common tropical house geckos. Now, of course, this is a gecko, which would make them very good climbers of these surfaces like the side of this palm tree right here. The way they could do that is that their toes are very specially adapted for climbing up these surfaces. You can see, like all other house geckos and most other geckos, these toe pads are very sticky. They're not actually sticky because they release a substance that's sticky like an adhesive. It actually is the structure of them works kind of like a Velcro and it'll help them kind of stick to walls without actually having to adhesively stick to walls. And it helps them crawl up basically any surface they can. These tiny little geckos can bite, although the bite is literally nothing. I've been bitten by pretty large sized house geckos. It feels like nothing. It's honestly cute to watch them bite. Something that's kind of odd about this species, usually house geckos have pretty textured skin. A lot of other house geckos like tropical or Mediterranean house geckos will have quite bumpy skin, but as you can see here, the skin of this Indo-Pacific house gecko is very smooth. The scales are absolutely tiny. You can barely even tell this thing has scales. 
All right, let's release this absolutely gorgeous gecko right back where I found it. One thing I didn't expect to see is something that I didn't even know existed until not too long ago, a bark crab spider. Let's learn all about the weird biology of this tiny little species. All right, this tiny little thing on my hand is actually something I'm really excited to see. This is a kind of ground crab spider, a true crab spider. I don't think I can tell what species this is exactly. These are some strange crab spiders. Usually what you hear about are the crab spiders that will sit on flowers as ambush predators and blend in in the middle of the flowers because they're pale colors like pink or yellow. But this, like other crab spiders, is still an ambush predator. You can see the front two legs are much longer than the rest and much stronger than the rest and they will use that to catch their prey as they use their back legs to stabilize themselves while they're ambushing. However, instead of ambushing on flowers, these will ambush either on the ground or on the surface of bark, like how we found it on the side of that palm tree. Right before we were about to call it and stop searching through these palm trees, I ended up finding one of the strangest spiders I've ever seen. No way. No way. Yes. That's a bark link. Oh my god. What? That's a bark link spider. I have not seen a bark link spider in like a year. Have you ever seen one of those things? No, that's a weird looking thing, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Wait a minute. It's gonna be really hard to get it off this little part of the palm tree. Really like fast? Uh, yeah, it's like fast. And... Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. What I have in here is something I haven't seen in a while and something that is a lifer for Spencer. This is the Bark Lynx Spider. Now this isn't anything venomous. This isn't anything that can hurt me. I only put it in this tube to conveniently have it in the tube while I was catching it. And you can see it jumps. It almost looks like a jumping spider when it jumps and it jumped right out of the tube and actually when I first saw this, I thought it was a jumping spider, but yeah, looking at this, this is definitely a bark lynx. Bark lynx spiders are probably the weirdest lynx spiders out there. When you think of lynx spiders, you're probably thinking of the famous green lynx spider. The big spider with the long, thin legs that they stretch out, and they camouflage in with green grass and green bushes. These are very different. These are much smaller, and they pretty much constantly live with their legs tucked in. Like most other lynx spiders, these are ambush predators. As you can see, it would blend in perfectly with the bark on the side of a tree, or in this case, like that palm tree right over there. It blends in so well. And not sure why they tuck in their legs. Maybe it's to save space while they're there. When their legs are tucked in, uh, you're less likely to see the shape of a giant scary spider coming after you if you're a small insect. Uh, you won't see the shape of a big predator spider. Now deceivingly, many lynx spiders can actually jump like jumping spiders or grasshoppers. That is because a lot of lynx spider species have pretty thick hind femora or the top segment of the hind legs and they hold them backwards while they hold the rest of their legs forwards. And they can actually jump forwards, propelling themselves much like a grasshopper or a cricket would using those back two legs. I'm not sure why, but one of the best ways to identify lynx spiders from any other family is that actually their legs are very spiny. If you look at green lynx spiders, or grass lynx spiders, or even these, their legs have pretty long and thin spines compared to many other spiders, and their legs are very spiny. In this case, a little hairy looking. And these bark- it just jumped off of me.